Welcome back, Weirs and Weeboos. Uh, I already recorded this video, went to edit it, and found out that the one time I do not check my OBS before I start recording, of course, I've got my mic muted and my desktop audio on, not the other way around. So now I've got to completely redo this, which means that I'm probably going to go through this a little bit faster, considering that I don't have as much enthusiasm to talk about all this, because I already talked about it all. But anyway, uh, that also means this video should be a bit shorter, I guess. And to be fair, this is a smaller update, so that feels, like, fair. No new cards this update. Um, some new balance changes, but not, honestly, not much. The, the bulk of this is reworks for dogs. Uh, and not really balance changes that seem to actually be targeting things in the meta. So, uh, first of all, Task Manager got a cost, cost reduction and now costs 5. I would be terrified of this if Task Manager could still deal face damage, but if you didn't realise, she's already been nerfed so that she can only deal damage to monsters. A 5-5-5 five, five, five that deals 1 damage to a monster for every card you played that game that costs 1 or more. I think that's pretty fair. I think that Task Manager needs that because Task Manager can only really be a tempo card now and, well, it only makes sense, I think it's pretty fair, that if she's a tempo card you should have good stats for cost as well as the good damage. Strangely enough, Spider Flower has also been buffed. Now, as much as I was interested by the spider changes, I actually never ended up making a spider deck before and trying it out. But looking at the new Spider cards, it seemed to me, like, next to Spider Sign, Spider Flower was one of the strongest cards in the Spider package, but apparently it must not have been because they decided they needed to buff it. It's got one extra health now, but more importantly, what it used to do before is you would pick a plant or arachnid in your hand costing for all less, and with the Synergy ability, you would play it from your hand instantly for free, Quote unquote. Obviously, you have to pay to play the Spider Flower in the first place, so it's not really free, but still for free, and then draw a card in its place. Uh, and then that got replaced here by instead summoning a copy of it. Now, in some ways, this is technically worse because you don't cycle through your deck as much since you don't get the card draw. Uh, but definitely, in most ways, that is better. Obviously, if it's a card that you actually get a lot of benefit out of having more than three copies, or two copies, or one copy, or whatever, of then, yeah, that's going to be good for you. The only problem is that most spiders and plants, there aren't really many cards that you are super crazy about having more than three copies of in that kind of pool of cards, especially ones costing four or less. Still, um, it's a buff to a card I already thought was good. So, yeah, the spider flower looks really good. Uh, it just comes down to whether spiders are good, and I genuinely don't know. They don't seem bad. I, I, I can confidently... <laughs> All I can say about spiders is I can confidently say I don't expect they're, they're bad. I don't know if they're great, I don't know if they're just good, I don't know if they're just okay. They're one of those things. Uh, then the rest, a lot of these, I'm actually going to skip over for a second just because they're all to do with dogs. And I want to cover that last because, um, just to get the rest of this out of the way, because the balance changes that affect not the dogs are kind of more important to people who are interested in the meta, I guess. Uh, because the dog stuff, I'm not sure how relevant it's going to be. Anyway, Bloody Tree has been completely reworked. And I'm sad to see it go. Bloody Tree is no longer going to deal fatigue damage as its dust ability. It's now going to be a 4 cost 3 6 that gets 1 attack every turn. Uh, not counting the turn you play because it's a turn start, not a turn end. So, um, I have very mixed feelings about this. In fairness, like, okay, I was mad when I f first saw this because I was thinking, well, that's unfair. I get that they want to rework it because technically if you can find enough ways to copy them, it's a guaranteed kill on your opponent eventually. It's just that the only way the opponent can like fight back is racing you. And I get that that's kind of frustrating. But at the same time, like if you're going to do that to Bloody Tree, why don't you do that to... And then that's where I kind of started to realise, actually, maybe now was the time to rework Bloody Tree. Because I was going to say that like there are so many other cards in the game that can guarantee kill your opponent if you don't race them, or card combos, that I feel like it's unfair to gut Bloody Tree when it's one of the most slow and fair of these like racing combos. There's definitely a good a argument to make it that like any combo that forces the opponent to race you, whether they like to or not, or lose the game, is bad design. There's definitely an argument for that but i would say that if you're going to have cards like that in the game then bloody tree is the last one that you want to be reworking because it actually takes a lot of skill to set up and also is slow to work so it's not like your opponent doesn't get time to react so at first i was pretty mad when i saw this but in fairness if they are going to take a stance of not like letting cards like that into the game then 
I think it's fair that they re- rework it. And again, I was going to be mad because it's going to be like, there's other cards in the game that just like free kill your opponent. Why do those cards not get reworked? But actually, they kind of have been. Even Soulless Chris has been reworked. Um, and I'm trying to think of cards that kill your opponent like almost guaranteed, either with an OTK or just by having enough burn or whatever. And the only one that's coming to mind that's still in the game is Metaton Neo. Which, yeah, Metaton Neo is not okay. But um, and, um, besides that, Bloody Tree is one of the only other ones that comes to mind. So maybe it was fair that they reworked Bloody Tree. And I will admit, I do like what they reworked it into. Well, sort of. I like that it has it's a 4-3-6 and it's a plant. That's some good synergy. We're going to see some more stuff uh, that plant deck could possibly use. Um, but then... I, and I don't I like that it's something that grows over time. I think undercards, it's lacking in early game engines that actually give you value in the form of tempo. Like, I feel like if you're going to play a tempo deck, that's the kind of stuff you want a lot of the time. It's some sort of card that's going to get stronger every turn it lives uh, and in a way that's actually going to give you board presence. Because there's fe- plenty of cards in undercards that give you more value the longer they live. But almost all of them just give you more cards or maybe more discounts or whatever. They don't usually straight up just give you more stats on the board. And I feel like that makes tempo decks feel kind of awkward in undercards. Not to say that that means they're bad, but I don't know. It's been one of my least favorite things when I do play tempo decks in undercards. Is it feels like there's almost no way to get a continuous stream of value from a card, even if you do like play well and try to protect it, just because... It seems like there aren't very many cards that give you a constant stream of value. I mean, a really good example is Fishing Rod. Yes, Fishing Rod is a high tempo, really powerful, like early game card, and it's a really nice ability, very easy to understand. You just draw an extra card every turn, but that's the problem. It gives you cards. You don't want cards in a tempo deck a lot of the time. You want board presence. That doesn't mean that Fishing Rod is bad, but it means that. Fishing Rod is more awkward to use than it would be otherwise if it was something like get plus one plus one each turn. And I like that this is something like that. The only thing is, like, plus one attack? Like, one attack? Once per turn? It feels very, very small. Like, very insignificant. Now, that doesn't mean the card's going to be bad, because it has an amazing start stat line and a relevant tag. I don't know how good most people consider plants to be, but so far I've had very good experiences playing plant decks, and I think they're kind of better than people think. Uh, I think they're extremely strong as long as tempo is strong and um, I really don't see anything wrong with the deck except it gets screwed over by control but like that's kind of what happens to decks that care about tempo that aren't so aggressive that they can kill control before they can afford a board clear. So I don't think there's... uh, I think that the new bloody tree is mostly a card I like. I just... I wish maybe it had a little bit less upfront stats and a little bit more continuous value, but I mean, I'm not going to complain. I still like this. The only thing is, I don't know if it actually fits into plant deck still. Like, don't get me wrong, this isn't a bad card, especially for a tempo deck, but plant decks have a lot of options. There's a lot of cards that I don't think they want to cut. They absolutely have to lock in the three dark candy trees and the three ghost trees, I reckon. I don't think they can take any of those out. Uh, They probably want vines. And um, they probably want to run, like, Flowey and stuff like that. Well, hmm, I don't know. I guess probably has been reworked. Maybe they don't want to run Flowey. We'll see. Um, But uh, when you take into account all the cards that plant decks want to run, and then take into account spells, even if you're not running spells, you probably want to run Bookcase in that case. You look at it all and you're like, do you have deck slots free for Bloody Tree after all that? And the answer might be no. Especially because I feel like Spider Flower, now it's been buffed, might actually be seeing a lot of use in plant decks and actually not spider decks as well because it's just well sorry when i say not spider decks that's not very clear i don't mean that it won't be used in spider effect decks i just mean like it might be used in plant decks that don't have spiders in them except for it like just using plants as the synergy point um so yeah this is probably the one i have the most to say about uh obviously because i think this is the most significant well maybe not the significant change to the meta but the most significant change to how playing the game is going to feel at least for me who has played a decent amount with bully trees. Anyway, um, Crack Geode went from 4 cost to 5. Now, when I first saw this, I was extremely confused because I realized that it made sense for a gemstone card to get nerfed, but at first I was like, why Crack Geode? That seemed like one of the worst gemstone cards. And I don't know, like, I guess I'm just having a Mandela effect thing here or something because I could have sworn that Crack Geode was a 2 4. 
which uh, it turns out it's a 3-5. Now, I know that's just plus 1 plus 1, but a 4 cost 3-5 is a not bad stat line. So, yeah, a 4 cost 3-5 that also deals 1 damage to every single enemy on the board when you cast a gemstone, that also gives you a gemstone every time you pay 2 or more for a spell, I can see how that might have been nerf-worthy. I do kind of wish they did reduce its stats down instead of increasing its cost, because I feel like this makes the card much less usable when I already think it's one of the weaker cards in the gemstone package. But, in fairness, like, that's what's going to hit it harder, and it might have been deserving of being hit harder. I'm not going to lie, I haven't seen that many people using Crack Geode. I've seen a decent amount of gemstone, but I just haven't seen that much Crack Geode. So I'm a little bit caught off guard that it was Crack Geode they hit still, even with that in mind. But, I mean... Yeah, I guess it makes sense. I imagine it was being used and maybe just wasn't running into it. Maybe just by coincidence they weren't drawing it that often. Anyway, and Pickaxe, which uh, I spent an embarrassing amount of time trying to figure out what this effect update was. And of course, as usual, it turns out that none of the effects it says here have changed. Actually, it's just an effect they removed, but because they removed it, it's not here. So I had no way of being able to tell just by reading this what the effect change was. Yeah, so the effect change is that they removed transparency from it, which seems sensible. I mean, I haven't complained so much about new gemstones, uh, so I guess I'll give you my stance on it. I mean, I haven't played the game enough to really say solid what I'm saying is gospel, but my opinion so far, having played against like new gemstones a few times, is that it feels to me like it's definitely better. I prefer this to the old gemstones. And I feel like it's not as much of a menace as some people think. But that doesn't mean that it's a bad idea to nerf it. I think that it's very annoying is the main thing. I don't think it's necessarily off the charts overpowered. But I just think it's mostly frustrating to play against. And while not, again, off the charts overpowered, I think that it is still probably pushing the power boundaries. And uh, Pickaxe is a great example of that. Uh, it was the most busted gemstone card back before they got reworked, and even after the rework, probably still the most busted gemstone card. Because, quite simply, it is just such a huge card that covers way too many use cases for something that costs two. Again, it was a two cost one for that not only was untargetable the turn it, pl it was played by anything... But also, as I said, 1-4, that's amazing stats for a 2-drop, extremely hard to kill, that also gave you a gemstone every single time it attacked, and also had the ability to attack instantly with its shock. Obviously, that is way, way too much utility on a well-statted 2-cost engine. And that's another thing, the fact that Pickaxe is one of the very few early game engines in the game, and technically it does give you a tempo advantage, even though it's adding a card to your hand, it's always the same card, and it's a card that's cheap, that does damage, which obviously affects the board. So I would consider that kind of tempo. So yes, I think it's absolutely sensible that they remove transparency from this, considering it's already an amazingly statted unit with multiple abilities that give value constantly over time. Um, that being said, you might be saying, well, if you're saying all those things about it, wasn't it, like, crazy broken before? Shouldn't have been making a bigger deal about it? But I think it's just that, while technically all that is true, that was a huge deal before, back when Gemstones was a more aggressive deck that could actually just murder the opponent for letting a pickaxe go off. But now that p Gemstones only deal one damage each, and also, obviously, don't hit monsters and face at the same time, it means that... If you let a pickaxe go off, it sucks because your opponent gets lots of value off of it, but it doesn't kill you. It's like, it, it sucks that you have to accept that, but it's not like, oh, I guess I just lose the game on the spot then because I can't answer this instant 2 drop that also has a high health value that also is untargetable on the turn it's played that also can attack immediately. You know, obviously that's really unfair, but it's a lot less fair when the downside is just your opponent gets a bit more value and... Like, instead of it just being, oh, I guess I'm just dead now at the start of the game. So anyway, the dogs. We have Dog Residue is the only one that's a direct buff, which has been changed so that it has an ability, which I'm not going to lie, I find this really, really strange, especially because it's such a small ability. Uh, at the end of every turn, if Dog Residue has any attack buffs, it gets taunt. Uh, now, if you don't remember, Dog Rather Do is just a 1 cost 2 3, and it used to have no ability, and now it has that ability. And it's not a card you can run, it's only a card that other dog cards can give you. Uh, a good example would be, if you weren't aware, Legendary Artifact, the card that fills your hand with dogs, 
uh, was reworked at one point so that the first set of dogs, instead of putting more dogs into your hand, put now put dog residues into your hand. And obviously now dog residue has been changed. That means that card will act differently now. Um, that being said, though, uh, do I think this change is relevant at all? I'm not going to lie. I don't get this. I feel like, I mean, obviously it's going to help. But it's going to help by such an insignificant amount, I feel like I have nothing to say about this. Like, I get that Taunt can be a lifesaver sometimes, but I feel like the context in which it's a lifesaver is a really stally, really long game deck, and dogs, I don't think that's their thing. Well, I say that, it might become their thing, which would be strange, but I'm seeing the pieces potentially for dog control, which I'm not sure if that's intentional. I'll explain that later, I know that sounds very out there. So anyway, Dog Treats um, has gone to a 3 cost 2-3 two, with haste that when it dies gives all ally dogs on your board plus 1 plus 1 instead of a 3 cost 3-3 three, three, that when it died added a 2 cost 3-3 three, three with dodge 1 to your hand, which was a, a bone. I believe that's what Dog Treats do does if I remember right anyway. Uh, at least did before. Um, so this new version I like more. I am a bit sad because I was planning on using the old version for something recently, and then obviously now the card's been changed, so I can't do it anymore. But it wasn't that crazy anyway, so like I'm not too beat up about it. But uh, either way, I actually kind of like this. I always feel like, as, as, well, I was always kind of mentioning, I feel like tempo decks in this game need more just on-board stat boosts. Now, I prefer it in the form of an every-turn trigger, where you have to try and keep it alive to get the higher value out of it. But... I also like it in the form of this instant attack that gives your units more stats. This might even, to some people, look overpowered, considering it is a 3-2-3 haste, not bad stats, that then also can be used to give everything on your ball plus one plus one as long as you're running enough dogs. Now, I get how that can seem overpowered, but I'm not going to say that that's not overpowered because, oh, it's too much effort. No, I think that's not too hard to set that up. I think the problem is thinking of this as a 3-2-3. Like, technically, that is its stats, but you really want to trigger that dust instantly. If that dust does not trigger at the right time, it's usually going to get barely any value. So you're almost always going to have to make sure it dies the turn you play it if you want it to actually give more than just maybe one dog the buff. But then if you do that, that means you have to attack it and kill it off on its first attack. So it having three health is actually kind of a downside. It's more like, uh, I think it's more helpful to think of this as a three cost deal to damage, give all dogs plus one plus one. Now, I still think that's a good card, absolutely, as long as dogs are good. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> anyway, Bone Painting. Not gonna lie, cannot even remember what the original Bone Painting did. I don't think I've ever used it. Uh, I think it used to be something to do with, like, shuffling dogs into your deck or something? It was... I don't remember what it was, but it must have been trash, because I, 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 I don't think I ever used it, not even once. Uh, so now it's been changed. It's now cost 3 instead of 4. And instead of being a 3-4, it's a 3-3. Three, three. And when you play it, it will give a dog in your hand, plus one, plus one, and torn. Eh? Like, okay, this might still see use, and I'll get into why later. Basically, dogs have a bit of a hand buff thing going on now. But, um, plus one, plus one. Like, I get three, three, three isn't bad stats, so it can't give too much, but plus one, plus one. Yeesh. That's not a lot on one target in your hand. At least you get to pick the target, but still, that's, uh underwhelming and then i mean i get that it gives taunt but again i feel like in a dog deck taunt is near irrelevant if they had some kind of engine where as long as it stayed on the board it was a constant threat then perhaps taunt would matter to protect your engine but they they really don't and you might be like oh well what about doggo doggo's a pretty good one and i would agree i think doggo's one of the best cards in the dog package i think doggo's really good i actually really like doggo i think it's a really fun card i think it's one of the things i like the most about dogs even though i barely ever play dogs oh wait they completely changed doggo so yeah you can't really use it to protect your doggo anymore so i don't know what you're supposed to be protecting with all this taunt except your own face but again i feel like with a dog deck you're not exactly scared of dying, like, super early to aggro or whatever. You kind of are the aggro. Well, more mid-range, but still. Mid-range tends to be aggro anyway. So, I don't really see the point in the taunt. At the very least, I think this still could be used if you're just desperate enough for targeted hand buff on a decent stat line that works with dogs. But uh, other than that, it's probably not going to be that great. Dog food is a similar situation. It used to be a 2-1-4. That if I remember right, um, you would look at three dogs when you played it, and when you when it died, it would give you that dog, whichever one you picked. Um, 
and now it's a four cost two four, uh, and it has a new ability that it has taunt. I think it had taunt before, actually. Never mind. Uh, and when you play it, you give all dogs in your hand plus one plus one. Again, I don't know what's up with all this taunt. Oh, I suppose. Okay, I nearly forgot about solidity. Okay, I, I genuinely I didn't remember solid solidity. Uh, is that what you're supposed to be doing with this? I feel like that has to be what they're intending we do, is that we use this taunt with solidity, because, like, I have no idea why else we care about this taunt in this deck. I don't know, maybe with solidity this deck works, it's a... That's weird, though. Anyway, dog food gives all your dogs in your hand plus one plus one. Um, that might sound decent. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I actually don't think it is. I don't think it's very good. In fact, bone painting might even be better, which might sound really weird, but, um... Essentially, I don't think... I mean, I don't, I'm not going to say it can't work. If you can fill your hand with too many dogs using Legendary Artifact, and then buff up all your dogs and actually play them all, and that doesn't take too long, and it doesn't slow down your tempo trying to set that up to the point where that's actually a very effective like play to win the game, then fair enough. That sounds good. But like, I can't see how else this really goes off. And uh, I think that... I mentioned that there is handball synergy with dogs right now, but a lot of the time, it seems like there's one or two targets that are super important to buff. And yes, it's not that hard to get dog food to hit multiple targets. But a lot of the targets are likely going to be things that, like, it's nice to buff them. But they don't really give you that great a benefit. You'd rather have all the buff on one dog that you actually want to have buffed. But of course, you don't have that option. It's a plus one plus one on every dog, no matter what you do. So yeah, that's a bit unfortunate to see. A rework I do like, though, is Rope Dog. Now, I was a little bit disappointed at first to see they changed Rope Dog, considering Rope Dog, next to Doggo, was one of the only cards I liked in the dog package. Uh, I didn't think... I thought it was pretty clunky, to, in fairness, but I thought that was mostly because it's a synergy card, like a high synergy card. Like, quite literally, it, you need to trigger synergy to use it, but then also, on top of that, um, it would cr basically create copies of things in your hand, which is, you know... Uh, dogs in your hand, at least. Uh, which is already, like... Why do you need copies of dogs? Dogs don't have, like, these super high synergy abilities where you really want to have loads of duplicates of them. Like, no, that's... it's It, it was a cool idea, but the problem was it was in dogs. Uh, and so they completely reworked it, and now it's a much more basic card, but for once, I actually think this change works, because this just fits way better into the dog deck. Uh, it is a four... Not a four cost. A five cost, three, seven now. And... Basically, it can attack twice every turn unless it hits face. So you can hit one monster in face or two monsters. You can't hit face twice. But aside from not being able to hit face twice, yeah, it's basically a 5-3-7 that it gets to attack twice every turn, which kind of makes it a 5-6-7. Kind of. Not quite as good, but still. Um, now, obviously, that means it's good stats. But also on top of that, it's another good hand buff target. However, this is not really what I'm on about when I talk about me thinking there's hand buff targets out there that are crazy good. That being said, uh, I do see the possibility that you run this in non-dog decks, maybe with stuff like Frozen Energy. Like, just think about this for a second. Uh, I think it was last patch we got Snow Puff changed so that it not only draws a card when it dies, but also when it's played it draws you a dog. Now, you maybe could run a deck where uh, Rope Dogs are the only dogs in your deck, and so they're the only dogs you can draw from Snow Puffs. Use that to tutor out Rope Dogs, and then run them in a pa uh, Patience deck where you can use Frozen Energy to instantly give them plus two, plus two in haste. And then that's a pretty cheap combo that will instantly hit the board with a 5-9 that gets to attack twice, which should be pretty good for trading. The only thing is, obviously, that's a decent amount of setup, and what you get at the end of that isn't a game-winning combo, it's just kind of a good turn. So you would have to just slot that into a deck that's already a working control patience deck that isn't running any dogs, that doesn't mind running snow puffs, that doesn't mind running frozen energy either, and we'll probably be running it anyway. And obviously that's quite a niche, but if that does come about, then I don't know, I could see I could see Rope Dog be seeing use outside of dog decks. Either way, I think in dog decks it's one of the carry cards in the package. Cool Bone has been changed so that uh, it's now kind of a parallel to Cool Papyrus. Now, instead of it being able to attack twice but only with, against monsters, it is a 5 cost 5 5 that when you play it as a 5 cost 5 5 exact copy of an ally dog to your hand. Now, the fact it says exact copy means that any kind of buffs, stuff like candy uh, or debuffs like KR or silence, will be copied onto, well, the copy. Um, 
Now, that's kind of interesting, but I don't know if there's any actual application for that. I'm trying to think if there's any way that's actually practical that you could give your own units candy. Because, like, the, the, one, the one you usually go with is Buttercup Tree, but if I remember, rem, remember correctly, Buttercup Tree can no longer target your own monsters. And even if it did, you would silence your own monsters and, like, uh, you know, it's not, it's not ideal. So, I don't know about this one, to be honest. Not that I think it's bad. I think that even if the thing you copy isn't that great to get a 555 copy of, this is still a 5 cost 55 that gave you another card, and the other card is probably, like, slightly above average. Still, though, I just... I don't know if it fits in the dog deck, just because, again, you've got a limited number of deck slots. It itself isn't a dog. And, like... I don't know what you use this ability for. I really don't. Like, technically, one of the a couple of the um, handbook target cards that are going to be carry cards for the dog package are smaller than five fives, but like not much smaller. So I don't know. Cool bones looking a bit janky to me. It's not a bad idea, but it's just the fact it's it's dogs. Like, what do you want me to do with dogs? <laughs> Anyway, Bone Draw got changed. Um, I was a bit uh, sad to hear this one at first as well, because one of the decks I had been working on was a Bloxer deck that used Bone Draws, because what they used to do is there were three cost uh, four threes that when they died, summoned, uh, well, they didn't summon it. They put in your dust pile a three cost four five taunt, and I would use that with Bloxer, which can resurrect three and cost or less monsters, uh, to get, obviously, four five taunts for free. Um, but... Then uh, they made this change, so now instead of adding the pile of d bones to your dust pile, it adds them to your hand. Which sounds overpowered until you realise they also changed pile of bones. So now, instead of having no ability except taunt and costing 3, it now costs 5. And when you play it, it gives a dog in your hand plus 3 plus 3. Now that being said, Bone Draw might actually be one of the more important cards in the dog package. While I don't think this is up front super powerful, because it has the same problem I was mentioning before of... Yes, it's not bad stats. Yes, it gives you a card, but like I, you don't want a card. You want more stats. But in fairness, this is a card that is a targeted hand buff that is actually for a significant amount instead of a pitiful plus one plus one, which is going to be really useful on, again, the hand buff targets. We're going to get to them. Don't worry. Just before we do get to them, though, there is one more thing in the way. Well, two more things, actually. I forgot about Doggo. Uh, annoying Dog. Uh, not going to lie. Th I think the new Annoying Dog looks trash. Um, it is now a 3 cost 1, 5, and it has Torn. I, 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 why? Why does it have Torn? I guess it's annoying. True to its name, but okay. Uh, add a Dog Residue to your hand, and if it has attack buffs, it adds two Dog Residues to your hand. Now, don't get me wrong, I realise Dog Residues are very slightly overstated, so, like, they're slightly better than the average card, kind of. And, like, I get that this is an upside, but again, in a tempo-heavy deck, I don't know how much you want to play a 3 cost 1-5, something with such low attack. I don't know why you care about the Torn when you don't have engines to protect, for the most part, and I don't know why you care about adding more cards to your hand when you want to get things onto the board, not your hand. It's like, it seems slow to pay off, and it seems like the payoff isn't significant enough to try and use it in a deck that isn't tempo orientated. So I'm like, what do you want me to do with this? <laughs> uh, Doggo has been updated, and I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be frank here. I hate this change. I already mentioned that Doggo was like one of the only dogs in the dog package I actually really enjoyed playing with. They completely changed him, and they made him like actually unplayable. Uh, he now has the effect Delay. If this has attack buff buffs, paralyze the monster in front of this. They didn't change his stats. So Doggo used to be a 3 cost 2 4 that just permanently gave all dogs on the board plus 1 plus 1 as long as he was left alive. Now, his ability is that he can par paralyze one single monster. It has to be the monster opposite him. And on top of that, he has to have attack buffs to even be able to do it. And on top of that, it's a delay, not a magic. And on top of... All of that, his stats are still trash. They're still just a 3 cost 2 4. To put this in perspective, there is a card called Sushi Pants in this game. You might not have ever seen it because no one ever runs it, but it's a 3 cost 2 5, which if you are running no charge or haste monsters in your deck, not a single one, 
it can instantly paralyze the monster opposite it. Essentially, it's Dogami. It's sorry, not Dogami. Doggo's ability, but as a magic instead of a delay, which makes it better. And also, he has one more health, and also does not have a condition. Well, I mean, again, it has a deck building condition, but it's better to have a condition where, as long as you make the deck in the way that meets the condition, it works every time. Than have a deck where you have a card where you have to like actively meet the condition in the middle of the game, like you do with Doggo, and actually giving it a, a hand buff. Um, so basically, I think you could probably agree that a 325 that does this exact same effect without the condition mid game that also does it instantly instead of as a delay is going to be better than this. And that card sees no play. I've tried it, I really have, because there's a decent amount of decks I make that actually don't have charge or haste monsters anyway. And I'm like, why don't I just put a sushi pants in here? See how it does. No one ever uses it. I mean, it seems like decent stats. Surely it'll be decent. And I keep finding the fact it's opposite monster being ends up being more uh, like more significant than I expect a lot of the time, and surprisingly can screw me. Especially because usually paralyze is very useless 90% of the time, and then 10% of the time it's a lifesaver. And if in that 10% of the time it's a lifesaver. There's something blocking the spot, like opposite the monster you need to paralyze to keep yourself alive. Then, well, shit, you're dead. You know. Um, so essentially, Doggo is a copy of Sushi Pants, a card that already sees no play, even in decks that already aren't running any haste or charge monsters, so the card has no condition. A card that's still probably outclassed in almost every deck by ICE mascot. Except it's worse because it has less health, a harder condition to meet, and on top of that, it uh, also does the as a delay and not a magic. And I'm like, wait, what the hell are they thinking with this? Like, I'm not gonna lie, like this change. I shouldn't get this mad about it because it's just it's just dogs. And I mean, I don't even play dogs that much, but like at the same time, I'm like, what are you thinking with this one? Like, I. I Unless there's some kind of thing where, if it, because of the delay, the Paralyze actually lasts two turns, because the Paralyze triggers later, and it actually keeps him in place for two. I'm guessing not, though. And if it's not that, if that's not the case, then, like... That seems awful if that's not the case. Uh, well, anyway, I need to get off Doggo, because I just go on a longer rant. Let's actually get to the cards that matter. The, lo the bo bottom three ones are, are, like, the main carry cards for the Dog Archetype. I would be saying that I think the dog rock attack is going to be pretty irrelevant after seeing all these changes if it weren't for these bottom three. So, Dogami and Dogaressa. Uh, Dogami is now a 7 cost 4 3 that has haste, and when played, will summon Dogaressa from your hand and give the card stat buffs to it. Dogaressa is the same, except she's a 3 4 and she has taunt, uh, and obviously summons Dogami. Now, I was a little skeptical of this at first, but to be fair, Taunt and Haste are both very relevant board control effects that are nice on big stats, especially Haste with high attack. And if you can get a significant amount of hand buffs, I do like this idea of using Dogami and Dogaressa. The thing is, when I first saw this though, I thought this seemed clunky. Because, yes, although it seems like the tools are there, I was thinking, this seems too slow though, doesn't it? Like, don't you just like not run this in a dog deck, not because it's bad, but, but because a dog deck wants to win before they get enough gold and enough time to actually hand buff these things up, play them at the right time, and get all the value out of them. I'm like, uh, like they, they've got the right idea here with instantly playing cards for free from hand. But, like, I wasn't sure if this really would work out. But then I had an idea. Uh, of course, we start to see these kind of interesting sort of in-between mid-range and controlly decks, where it's kind of a control win condition, like like with my previous gemstone decks, but it tries to outrace other control decks, um, and so it kind of goes in the middle of mid range and control a lot of the time. I think that Dogami and Dogaressa fit very well for that archetype. They have the board like relevance with instantly summoning from hand and just generally having good stats in combination to make it so that I look at them and I think, yeah, that looks good. Um, but they, of course, they would be hold, held back by that high cost and the amount of time it would take to set them up to be actually good if it weren't for the fact that of what I just mentioned, that I think there's actually a relevant archetype for them to fill there. Now, of course, that's not usually what dogs would go for. Usually dogs would be more aggressive. However, we are starting to see a lot of dog cards that are like, how do you use this aggressively? How do you use this aggressively? How do you even use this in mid-range? This card will be good if it just wasn't being used in dogs and all that. And the more I'm starting to think about it, the more I'm starting to think maybe dogs are just not going to be like mid-range or at least aggressive mid-range. I would say it was in between aggressive and mid-range before. 
and now it looks like it's going more towards between mid-range and control. Uh, whether that's intentional, I don't know, because it definitely feels weird. But uh, I think that's solidified by the final card for dogs that has been changed, Sand Dog. Bit sad to see this one go, because this is one of the other dog effects I thought was more interesting, even though I generally didn't like most other dog cards. But um, this is insane now. Um, Sand Dog is an 11 cost 4-8, because its stats didn't change. And when you play it, it now summons an exact copy of itself. So you might be like, oh, it's just another hand buff payoff card. Why is that such a big deal? An 11 cost too. Honestly, why is that card any good? Well, do you know what 4 times 2 and 8 times 2 are? They're 8 and 16. So if you get no hand buffs on a sand dog, no benefits at all, it's still an 11 cost 816. Only it's better than an 11 cost 816 because the main problem with an 11 cost 816 would be by the time you play it, your opponent would instantly headshot it every time. They can't headshot all of it if it's split across two bodies, both of which they both can't really ignore because they have four attack and that's like high enough that you can't really afford to leave it alive on the board for long. So yeah, I think Sand Dog seems like the most powerful dog card in, like in the game now. And since it costs 11 and that's so expensive, I feel like that's going to make it so that dogs start going in this slightly different direction. It seems like all the good dog cards are cards that take too long to give you their benefit for it to fit in an aggressive mid-range anymore, and now it has to lean into a controlling mid-range to actually make sense. And I think that makes sense, considering that, like, Sand Dog already, like, I think it heavily su supports that kind of play, because um, just stats is usually not something you can win with in control decks, and technically Sand Dog is just stats. It's more a mid-range thing. But obviously the fact that Sand Dog is so expensive and so high value means that in like straight up mid-range or aggressive mid-range, again, it's just too much to pay for. So I think that it's perfect in this kind of control mid-range hybrid. And again, we could just see that maybe you don't run dogs decks at all, at least not like dog synergy. Maybe you just run decks that just so happen to run Sand Dog and then you used Snow Puff to pull Sand Dog. And the deck has nothing else to do with dogs. You just you just have like a control or a mid range or a hybrid between those two that's running sand dog and using um, snow puff to pull them. I think that's perfectly like possible as well. Uh, same with rope dog. I mean, I don't know. The more I look at this, the more I think, what's the point of going in all in with the dog synergy anyway? Because it feels like the dog synergy is the weakest part, and the individual cards are often the strongest part. So I'm kind of looking at it like. Like, why don't you just make it just not even a dog deck anymore? Like, I don't, I don't know if that's not what they intended, but that's what I'm getting out of this. Especially because there's already a whole lot of card buff, not card buff, hand buffed cards in this deck uh, game that, like... <sighs> Honestly, I was saying stuff like Bone Painting might see use just because it's decent stats uh, and it's targeted uh, and it's relatively cheap. But even then, maybe you'd run Anime Sword over Bone Painting. Because, like, that is more buffs, although I think it's randomly targeted, so maybe that's why you wouldn't, but... Eh. Anyway, that's this season's changes. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next one. Sorry, this one's less uh, high effort, obviously, but... Uh, well, I don't think this one really warranted that much, considering there weren't any new cards, and I don't think any of these changes are going to be super significant. Could be wrong on that, but... Uh, yeah. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.